you build your life on your faith. The message today is promise to life. Promise to life. So here's the scripture. First, uh, Second Peter 1 verse 4. By which have been given to us exceeding great and precious promises, that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature. And it lets you escape the corruption that's in the world through lust. Aren't you glad we have an escape from what's going on in the world? We don't have to live like the world, care like the world, be worried like the world. We can live in a different place. But you know why we can live in a different place? Because we can be partakers of His divine nature. <laughs> we are not normal. By human terms, we are normal in God's terms. We are normal as God meant for us to be created. We have the very life of God in us. The reason we're emphasizing the Word, the Bible, getting people into Scripture daily, reading through the Scripture together, we preach the Word, is because in the Bible, some say anywhere from 300 to 30,000 promises are in the Bible. A lot of people narrow it down and say we've got somewhere around 7,000 that they can really put out. But there are others who argue there's as many as 30,000 in the Bible and there's only like 31,000 verses. And so, but whatever it is, the Bible is a book full of God's Word, which are His promises. Old Testament Scripture says His Word will not return void, but will accomplish what it was sent to do. He sent the Word to do something. He didn't have it inscripturated, put in the Bible in Scripture for us so that we could just have a book laying around at our house or one to carry to church or one to just study doctrine that we can write in theology books. But rather, there is living bread, a Word for people so that we can be partakers of the divine nature. We don't want to just celebrate 30,000 promises. We want to be partakers of that promise. When he said that he would, he would someday do something that would cause people's hearts to be changed. Hearts of stone would be changed to hearts of flesh. In other words, soft hearts. And he would write his law on hearts you wouldn't need the law written to them and, and, and given to them in, uh, on tablets of stone, but it would be in their hearts, and I'll be their God and they'll be my people. We are those people. That wasn't just a promise to put out there somewhere. The reason God gives promises, this is what I'm trying to say, the reason God gives promises is so that people can be partakers of the promises. The promises are there to let us know what's available in the divine nature. <laughs> and the divine nature that we are partakers of is none other than the life of Christ. Glory, hallelujah. I like a little bit of the wording in the Message Bible, if they'll put that up here, uh, 2 Peter 1 there where I just read. Everything that goes into a life of pleasing God has been miraculously given to us by getting to know personally that just can't, that can't be it. That's, you guys must have a different message Bible back there. Oh, it's three and four. They put it together in yours. Okay, I have this one. Uh, okay, the one who invited us to God. And then the best invitation we ever received. 
we were also given absolutely terrific promises to pass on to you your tickets to participation in the life of God after you've turned to Him. Glory, hallelujah. The promises of God are our tickets. It's not a ticket's paying for it. What it means is you find out what's in there. You find out from Scripture what God has provided for us in Christ, and then that allows us to understand, believe, and accept. The word receive means to take into possession for yourself or admit or allow in. Now we have the promises of God and we're taking it for ourselves and we're allowing it in. That's why you want to be in the Bible. Because you want to see God's words, which are His will and His plan, so that we can walk in what He has provided for us in Christ. We are partakers of His divine nature. Uh, like the miracle, if you will, I'm going to kind of call it a miracle. We know it in science. We know what, how this works. But it's kind of a miracle when you think of it in the sense of how big this is, that we can eat food. Now this is a wrong time at 12 o'clock noon to start talking about food. But I was at a luncheon in Bradenton the other day and uh, Daniel Colenda was the speaker, uh, spoke for three hours. He's the man who took over, young man who took over for Reinhard Bonnke. And, uh, and a young man who is now the, has taken over for Reinhard Bonnke. They showed videos and all of those kind of things. And there wasn't a dry eye in the place because in Africa, uh, in one meeting alone, they had four million people come to Christ. Four million in one meeting. And, uh, and people coming to the Lord, super, I mean, I, I'm not here to tell you that story. He was there, amazing testimonies. He said if just one of those things that happened there on just one night, let alone a whole meeting or something, just one night, like 1.6 million people in the service. And, you know, 1.2 million of them getting saved in one service kind of stuff miracles and healings. He said, if just one of those nights happened in, uh, let's say, Times Square, New York or something, the whole world would have it on the media. But because it's in Africa, nobody talks about it. But when you see it, it's just amazing. God is doing amazing things. Anyway, uh, uh, it was great hearing him. What I was getting at was they had a good meal. I got in the line to get the food and there was a great salad, nice salad dressing on it. There was, uh, uh, looked like French fries, but it was carrots, baked carrots. And they were delicious carrots, a little spice on them. And next thing was, I think, mashed potatoes and with the peelings in it and everything. I like it that way. Good, hearty mashed potatoes, you know. And then nice salmon, nice grilled salmon. And or chicken if you wanted, and time I went through there, and man, are you getting hungry yet? Uh, and then, you know, I ate that, and, and, uh, and then Pastor Jennifer and I went back to Naples, and after the service there, I think we ate some, what did we eat that night? I uh, can't remember what it was that Friday night, but we ate something good there at the church, and they were feeding us down there. Pastor Thigpen had us just, just I did say Pastor Thigpen, not Pigpen. So <laughs> Pastor Thigpen is good friends of ours in Naples, great church there. And, and they fed us so well. And, and here, if you haven't gotten the point yet, we eat all these different things. But the miracle of that is, that's me standing here this morning. It, it's, if I didn't eat, I wouldn't be here. I put in carrots and I put in mashed potatoes and I put in some chocolate this week. <laughs> I 
praise God for chocolate. And, but the miracle spiritually is even greater. You get up in the morning and you read a verse that jumps out at you. And you're a partaker of the divine nature. You go to church and you hear a preacher preach, which is how it's meant to be, Romans chapter 10. How are they going to hear without a preacher? And it's meant to be that we hear the word of God from preachers. It's meant that we read it from the scroll like Jesus did. It's meant that we hear it from preachers. We hear God's word and what happens? We become partakers. We become partakers of what we hear, the Word of God. That's why we're getting into Scripture even more this year. Why? Not just so we can read a bunch of knowledge, but so that what we read becomes part of us and we are partakers of the divine nature. I want to walk more like the righteous person I am the end of this year than I ever have. I want to be more healthy than I've ever been because I realize the stripes of Jesus have done something for me. I want to be more filled with joy than I have ever been because the joy of the Lord is my strength. I want to have more peace than I've ever had in my life because my peace I give unto you, not as the world gives, give I unto you, but my peace I give to you. I want to walk more in the anointing of God because it is the anointing, it is God who anoints us and gives us grace. I want to serve more people because more grace is on me to serve. It's all in the Bible and we can be partakers of the divine nature because we are receiving the promises of God. Hallelujah. And that's why I had the communion today because nothing quite says it like the institution of the new covenant with the Lord's Supper or communion. The Lord instituted this, that when you take this bread, you eat the provision of my body. It may sound strange to people, but we're just talking bib biblical language here. I, I don't care how it happens, what it all means, I just know it's in scripture. I want to be a partaker of the divine nature. Amen. He said it, when you take this bread, you're taking of me. And when you drink this cup, you're partaking of the blood of the new covenant. There is, a, there is an assimilation, if you will, and a taking, a receiving through communion. So don't just take it as though it were just something, uh, 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 something to remind us of something. Take it as a miracle. Take it as a miracle, a precious thing God has given to us that is, a, that is receiving and taking into and for ourselves the provision of the new covenant. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give you praise. Let me, let me show you a couple of scriptures. Let's just close off with these right here. I, I just want to read these to you. John chapter 6. They'll be here on the screen if you just want to, if you just, everybody wants to just look here. We'll just read along here. John 6, 32. And we'll start right there and go through verse 35. Then Jesus said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, Moses did not give you the bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Then they said to him, Lord, give us this bread always. 
And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never hunger, and he who believes in me will never thirst. <laughs> Whoo, hallelujah. Verse 48, we'll start right there again. Same chapter. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which comes down from heaven that one may eat of it and not die. Did you know we're not going to die? As our brother preached this week so well, we're not going to pass away. We're going to pass over. Yeah, we're not, we're not going to pass away. We're going to. He said, don't even have that in your vocabulary. Passing away, dying. There's no such thing scripturally as us dying. We are alive in Christ and we're passing over. Because we've got the Passover lamb. Oh, where was I? Which, which verse did I finish up on? 50? And then now 51? Okay. Shoo. I, I am, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I shall give is my flesh, which I shall give for the life of of the world. The Jews therefore quarreled among themselves saying, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? Then Jesus said to them, most assuredly I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. In case you're getting squeamish about the language here, we can, we can kind of make it more palatable if you want. We're just partakers of his life. We're partakers of his life. And look at this. Most assuredly, unless you eat, the, you have no life in you. Man, without this bread, we're just dead men walking. But oh, when one turns to the true bread, <laughs> Hallelujah. Something happens. We call it being born again. And we are living forever. What's born of the spirit is spirit. What's born of the flesh is flesh. Thank God he has given us eternal life. And then Jesus said, where was I again? You all have to help me. Am I 54 now? Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. And I will raise him up at the last day for my flesh is food indeed and my blood is drink indeed. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him as the living Father sent me. And I live because of the Father, so he who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread, this is the bread which came down from heaven, not like your fathers ate the manna and are dead. He who eats this bread will live forever. The promises of God are given to us to be partakers of the divine nature. Hallelujah. Every head bowed and every eye closed for a moment. You're here this morning or you're listening online or anywhere that you might be and hear this message. You can put all your faith and trust in Jesus Christ for your life and eternity. Yes, you can. 
No, no trust in your own works. No trust in religion or something else. Trust in Jesus. He is the true bread. He is the life. He is the way. He is the truth. Hallelujah. And you can come to the loving Father through Jesus Christ. Will you put all your faith, all your trust in Him today? Come on, if that's you, would you lift your hand wherever you are and say, yeah, that's me. I put all my faith, all my trust in Him. Lift, just lift your hand to let God know. I put all my faith, all my trust in Jesus. Come on, why don't we just say it together and help everybody who might be doing this with renewed faith, faith for the first time, or just confessing what they believe now. Let's say this together. I believe in Jesus Christ. I put all my faith, all my trust in Him for my life and eternity. In Jesus' name. That's, it's, it, that's it. If your heart believes that, you're as good as in heaven. You're as righteous as Jesus. You're as blessed as Jesus. You have eternal life. Thank you, God. We give you all the praise.